I'm gonna come one day and do some repairs on him though, cause he needs to be he needs to be revitalized. Okay, this is Barry C. Paul coming at you with my friend here, uh, and we're gonna see what we, what we can talk, what we can discern about this. Uh, oh, you want me to ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. it doesn't look that violent. None of your uh, figurines, they, even though they have teeth and stuff mm -hmm. like that, they look like they eat like vegetarian every night, mm -hmm. black beans and stuff like that. <laughs> Well, the fact is, even though they have the shape, okay, start with, with this one, there, there was never one like, like this. I mean, when I, when I designed this, I grew as a Celestrian, but the fact is, there never really was a doll one. That was just a projection that they gave me, you know, something that my mind could, could, could grasp. So they wanted you to make this? They wanted me to make it, so, but they, they said they, they, they never had a, a Celestrian that looked like that. Can you, you the breed? Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine a planet-sized doll Celestrian? It just ain't gonna happen. I mean, it's just they take form, but why not though? Because it, it, to them it was kind of like something that would have been ridiculous. It's like them turning into a horse. It's just not interesting. I mean, it wouldn't have really interest them to be a, a, a oversized but the dog. The French terrier would, is more, more, more mellow kind of. Well, but it, no, it's not that it was mellow. I mean, she see in the portrayal, this portrays itself as a tough Boston terrier kind of dog. Okay. He he, he talked and he acted like he was gruff. Okay. But he was—he was—he was the most gentle, tipper creature you would ever want to meet. He was gentle. I mean, well, he was, but, but you know. Yeah, but see, that—that's that's just a dragon a horn and mm, wings. That's just fringe. I mean, it's that fringe. was yeah. It's just—it's just like like show. Because see, that's what they do for entertainment. They take these shapes to to see who can make the most interesting shape. That's why every celestial that I ever drew has a different hood, a different tail, and a different different qualities to them. But the one thing they have in consistency is that they, they look dragon-like and they don't take a conventional form, like animals, kind of like, like you say, dogs, cats, horses, um, cow. They, would, they think it's kind of stupid to be a cow and, and always as big as a planet. To them, that's, that, that, that was not what they so, call But they're gentle, man. They don't use these to like, no, eat no, no. or anything? No, they're energy beings. All okay. they eat is energy. This is just another form they take that was pleasing to them because they, it kept them amused by what they were, what they changed to. Okay, the horn is just a horn. But why did they grow off the French bull, the French bulldog or well, Boston Terrier thing? They, they created that when I was drawing. This was before I actually actually built that chamber. Did any of this? This terrier, he has, he had a terrier named Millie. That yeah, this was a sort this of was a Millie. Of his pet. Yeah, this was a, this was this was actually like a, a creation. I wanted to see how my dog Millie would look as a Celestrian. So I had this guy create this picture. Metamorphosis. I, I yeah, I drew it. And told him to make metamorphosis. it. In fact, it was a guy. It was a place called Villas Tachydermis. The guy in there, his name was Al. He made this for me, or probably over, over, oh, probably over 10, 10 or fifty. Oh well, no, take that back. Because I lived over here in Antioch for ten years. He made that um, fifteen years ago when I was in, when I was living in Rock Ridge. So this thing was this thing was twenty made twenty five years ago. How are you feeling this thing now? I still love it just as much as I did. But the only reason I sold the bill was because I needed money and it was. I couldn't take care of it, it was deteriorating. Okay. And it would have ended up just like all my other stuff. This thing would have ended up, eventually you ended up in, 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 in uh, recycle thing. Yeah. Because, I mean, not that I wanted to get rid of, but I had so much stuff, like that 22, that 27 foot dragon. When we moved, I had nowhere to take that thing into. And then, I didn't even know if I had a tool shed when I got there. Yeah, when you moved, just grab the yeah. soft goods and go. I, I grabbed what I could and, and took it. Like my crystal shave, the original one, mm -hmm. I had to dismantle that thing. It's not over there anymore, it, it, it was torn up. It was held together with plasticine and, no, not plasticine, it was hooked with plumber's putty, um, acrylic poppy resins, and all that other stuff that you put things, you put models together with. It had no screws holding any of that together. It was just glue and, and plumber's putty and seals. So when I got those, I had to, I had to break it apart. I, I had, a, had a lot of pets. Why'd you, did, why'd you pick uh, this particular one that you had? Because I had I had a dog named Millie. I had, she was a Boston Terrier. Yeah, other dogs before they, Millie or. Oh, I, I had I had a, I had an Australian Blue Hiller. I had, I had two Malamutes, but the thing was, uh, Millie was the smallest dog. I, I've never owned a small dog in my life, but not, I brought her. Okay, but anyway, the, the video as far as the video is concerned, that, that's probably about it. But uh, we can continue this. But, but Mill peace Millie, to all Millie, and, and Millie, you two Millie, and Millie, 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 Millie. But you guys didn't tell me that you had a dog like this. Yeah, I, I actually did. Bill has pictures of it somewhere, but she was my small, my, my, my one small dog. I never owned a small dog, but I wanted one, even if it was only one time. 
So I, they, these two people were selling the, a Boston chair. They had a male and a female, but they had already sold the male. So they had only the female left. So I said, I looked at Millie. I, I, that wasn't the name that they had for her. I, I named her, renamed her Millie after I bought her. I, ca I called her Millie. So I, when I got her, she was about a year and a half old. And she was a sweeter dog girl. She had this big pumpkin, pumpkin mouth that just went from ear to ear. Yeah, friend. Okay, friend. yeah. So anyway, I took pictures of and I had, had I have a glass one that was a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than this one. And when she passed away, I decided I wanted to have a celestial dog made. So I had this one made. Now look at the eyes on this. See your eyes? Those are alligator eyes. That thousand yard stare. Yeah, okay. I had them make this thing. Now, and these are the kind of eyes I'm going to make my model of a celestial with. I'm going to put the same kind of eyes in it. All those eyes will be alligator eyes. Yeah. I, I found a book on, on, on bones or, you know, on plastic bone parts and things. So you're saying alligator, not like viper eyes or any snake no. eyes? Alligator. They, they were alligator. Crocodile alligator. And what color are alligator? What, green? That's the green like that with, with all the golden frecks in them and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, that's the, celestial, those yeah. little flakes. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna buy me. I, I'm gonna buy. I, I saw this alligator jaw set. It's made. Out of, it's made out of plastic, and it, but it's an actual jaw set of an alligator. So I'm gonna find somebody to make me a, a celestial hand puppet, like the one drawn in those pictures. It's gonna be six six foot tall, but it's gonna be a pure puppet. It'll be like the ones I got home with my raccoon. You put your hand in the back of the head mm -hmm. and make it talk. Because I want that. Because when I talk to people on YouTube, I want somebody sitting. Somebody to travel the road with me. I have my celestial hand puppet, mm -hmm. and whenever I talk to them, she'll be there to answer questions. And even though I'm talking, she'll project her thoughts through me, and, and I'll make the puppet say what she wants to say. As I, is it now. So as to like, so you can keep your eyes on the road, and, yeah. and use that as a medium as to a medium, talk to yourself. Yeah, because people will respond to that. I know kids will respond to it, and, and even as the adults will. But see, having just me in the picture just ain't cutting it for me. My slush unions are there, and they, they, want, they want me. The last media I made, Bill used one of my, my um, puppets that I had, a, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And my slush said, well, I, even though this, this hand puppet is like wearing a cheap suit, it's all I got. So I had, I had to run with it. So she talked through the, through the, 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 the key Tyrannosaurus Rex puppet and made it be her. But she, was, she wasn't that happy with it because she said it's like a cheap suit. You, even if that's all you got, you wear it. And she, she, she projected her thoughts through that puppet, and she said, well, she said, I hope someday you can, you can get enough money together and make me a pseudo celestial body where I can come into it through you and communicate with people through it. So that's why I'm, trying to, I'm working so hard to see if I can get me some money to build this thing. I know, I know a whole lot of people can do it. It's just the money part of it that's, that's cutting it down. I would have one right now if I had about... Eight thousand to ten thousand dollars. I, I know a guy. That, so a, tra a traveling, a traveling, and it's a celestial yeah. raccoon, or? Well, no, I, I want, I want the I, arm thing. See, when you hit the road, that was like, like kind of an important point. When yeah, you're that raccoon. the road and going somewhere. Yeah, but see, that was just that was just my friend Cooney, and even though he wasn't celestial, my celestial did project through it. You want to take this to the road? I want to take it to the road. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to different places. And like, like in front of shopping centers and and science fiction bookstores, uh -huh. and I'm going if they if they let me do it, I ain't gonna be obtrusive with. It. I'm gonna let them ask them, can I come out and advertise for them? Yeah, because yeah, I talked to a few guys. Cause what I want to do is I'm gonna go out in front of a bookstore that sells science fiction memorabilia and tell them I like to help you advertise some of your stuff and let my 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 friend here help me with it. Mm -hmm. And if they do, and if if I bring you extra customers, you give me a um, hundred dollars. If, if a bunch of people show up and going in your store because they seen this thing talking in front of the store, you give me a hundred dollars. Nobody make any so mention no of points, it. points, just a straight C note. Yeah, right? just a C note. Okay. I ain't talking about no big, big, gigantic amount of money. I'm talking about a hundred bucks if you get twenty customers because my rack, my, my celestial. It sounds like you just want to roll, man. Like you want to roll from place to place. Yeah, I want to just roll from place to place and have a little fun. Yeah. And, and make a few dollars along the way. Yeah. You're not greedy. No. I mean, if I make any money, that's big. I wanted to be with a big company that they're gonna make, they might make 50 million or a couple hundred million dollars with it. And I'm gonna tell them that me, I'm, I'm here in this thing, and I get a, I'll get a small percentage of everything you do with it. Mm -hmm. Not a big percentage, just a small percentage. Even if I made 10 cents off of every acting figure they made and they sold a million acting figures. It's 110%. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I would, I would still make enough money that make me happy and I could do some stuff for somebody besides myself. Yeah, you know. 
But I do want that puppet man to see puppet. Bill said he knows how to do it. He works with a company that does that kind of stuff. But the big problem is money, time, and somebody who will get it. How big do you need? I went by big. Hands up. Hands up. Hand in its back. Yeah. Because what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to design the, I'm going to design the kind of like a socking, socking. And that kind of thing, like that socket, the puppet. The inside, I have a, like a, a, a foam or rigid thing in it, so that when your hand goes in there, you got this flappy thing in there, like that, that makes it open and close. Because my raccoon has a flexible mouth, and I can make his mouth push up, and I can make this all kind of little things you can do with his mouth. But a head that big, it's going to be more difficult to operate. So either you have to add an animatronic in it, or some kind of pull cable that you make it like the. Like the Stand up ventriloquist then where you pull the little stain and it makes his mouth open and close. What's the color and shape of it? Uh well purple, yellow, blue, some gold, silver, maybe different colors. It's, it's gonna be like what it's gonna be it's gonna be the basis of what you see here, but uh, it's gonna be celestrian. A celestrian, but so it's gonna yeah. be more organic with more appendages and stuff yeah. and not as robotic. Yeah, and it'll have all those eyes, like it'll have all of them. And then what I wanna do is I wanna have an armature in it that's flexible enough to be bent but strong enough for it to stand up. Cause I can design, I can actually design a like, Armature, animatronic armature that could do anything that you see on the market, and I can design it easily if I had the money and I go out and find the parts, I could build it. If I got the parts, anything we're talking I, soft goods here, man. You don't need to build it if, if it's going to be made out of it. We just need to go to the materials. No, store. but I'm talking about if I want an animatronic, though. See, because oh, okay. I, I designed the animatronic, uh, animatronic armature that, like I say, I designed the idea for a molder. All the gear works and gear boxes and things. I actually got a picture at home right now with that all in there. And I can break it down and go out and find the parts for it. And I can actually build the motors. I can build the parts. And I'm not an engineer. But I, I know what I know and I, I see what I know. I mean, this thing is just, it's just pieces. Yeah. Okay. That crystal chamber that I built, uh -huh. you've seen it. I built it from the ground up. No engineering skills. I just took all the parts. I just, I gotta see it. I just took the plan and drew it. So went out and found the pieces and, and I built it. It's, it. But this is this is harder. So besides the soft six foot sculpture that lays on your arm that you can animatronically soft sculpture and use as a medium, you also want a robotic one. Well, I, that's I rather, fully hydraulic. And yeah, I rather have the first one I have do that. But if, but failing that, I would go for just a armature that. Flexible with but, the hand puppet thing. Yeah, that that would be millions. So that the animatronic. Yeah, but see that soft sculpture. Yeah, would be more feasible. Yeah, but that's why I'm saying the company because he's. What I want to do is I want to design the thing and. Why he, would the animatronic be better than the soft one? Well, because see, I could I could actually have a manipulable glove that when you put on your arm, it's hooked into this thing and everything in my hand and moves. You can project he or does. Yeah. They already got that technology out there. I've seen it. When you move your fingers, the eyes, the arms, everything is talk. It's all high yeah, tech. Yeah, it's all high, high tech. tech. And and I got a design where I take these, these wireless flash cards and put it in the main drives of the skull and in any parts of them. And I can have a little Palm Pilot pushing buttons and it do the same thing. Wireless. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, no, they they don't already. I seen I seen that too. That's already been done. They got places where you they have to type in the computer. Uh, move and then the robot will perform everything they program pre-programmed into it all those motors and stuff They're already hooked into the necessary equipment so that robot can just do all this stuff But the only problem with their, their product is that they have, have, have to have it hooked into a eternal power source I designed mine so it's self-powered No outside electricity is needed and everything is built right on in there All you do is have it Your generators are built into it. No gas power these generators are, are, are made that once you get this thing up, fully up and operational, the generators are self perpetual. They will power everything, and a, a, a certain amount of that energy is reallocated back into the batteries, like those new cars that got that run on these wheels, and after they're driving, they generate their own electricity. This is the same technology that would be in it, except in the tail, it, this big fluke has flat generators about this high, and each one of them is, is geared into a special gearbox where. It, Generates its own electricity, it relocates the energy back into the battery packs. The battery packs runs the engine and everything, but it always sends them a certain amount of energy back to the, the battery so that the battery stays. Molecular motion. Yeah, molecular motion. Okay, so the stain will run for. It's going to give it the initial push. Yeah. Just the, to turn on the, the batteries universal will be like energy generators. Yeah. The, the batteries will be charged when they're put in. Okay, once they're charged and you hook everything up and you turn it on, 
it'll get the generators going and the generators will just keep it all going. So you don't even need the battery after you start it because it just keeps going no, and going can, and going. Yeah, it it can, never stops that cycle. Mm -hmm. The only thing that ever stops this thing is if something breaks and it, it just finally just breaks. Mm -hmm. But if, if you design it the right way, this thing, will, this thing will run as long as anything. I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing that will actually stop it. But the only thing I'm afraid of because if they build it with artificial intelligence and it becomes self-aware, let's be trouble. <laughs> They can think of it, something that, that, something that big, something that strong, because the motor is designed to do anything. I mean, you can put these motors in blenders, helicopters, cars, you can models. Have, you can have everything running and never, and never have to turn it off. Never have to turn it off. And like I said, I designed an artificial intelligence program for it by having them design the software and stuff. This thing could be made self-aware of itself. It, it can talk to you. It can, it can do just like this thing is doing. It'll talk to you, and it'll, if you sell it... Uh, Follow me, man. Follow me, uh, ne I mean, Nasha. It'll follow you wherever you go, like, like an old-sized puppy. Yeah. And the thing about it is, if, if, it, if you have a glitch in it, you better be, 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 be very careful, because if there's a glitch in the software, and it becomes self-aware, and then, then somebody do something that it doesn't like, it has the strength to crush them. Self-awareness, so it becomes self-involved with itself and yeah. its ego and stuff, and, and it becomes, if it has a software problem? Yeah, it, it can become a quite a bit of dangerous piece of equipment. I mean, like a running away crane kind of thing. What would take it down? Well, basically you had to totally obliterate it with, with a, a bomb. You had to blow it up with something more stronger than it, because the way I design stuff, I design it with redundant systems. Okay, this thing has a motor packet in it, which has four motors per packet. Each motor packet has four motors in it. Even if two of them went out, there's still two of them running it. So if you blow up one of the motors in one of them packets, it's still got three other ones running that thing. So if you, even if you blow up three of the packet motors, it's still got one more in there keeping it running. So in other words, you got a, you got a, you got a task ahead of you just to stop this thing. So you have to blow out four. You have to blow out all four motors in every packet in order to, to actually disengage this thing from being operational. And if you don't do it right, this thing will be on you before you even, you even get one shot off. So just bombs and just bombs. having an arsenal. Yeah, because shooting it with guns is just going to make it, it's just going to piss it off. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and if they design the way I want to design, <laughs> even that ain't going to do it. Well, shouldn't you design in some sort of... Safety factors. Yeah, artificial intelligence, robotics, um, self-awareness, the um, three, three balls of robotics. You cannot harm a human being. You can't allow a human being to um, come to danger. You cannot um, kill a human being and you cannot... Let your own safety be the cause of a human death. In other words, if a human being, if you're, what you do is going to cause a human being to die, you can't do it. You, you cannot allow that. If a robot sees that what he's about to do is going to cause a human to die, it conflicts with the program. In other words, it has to shut itself down in order to keep from inflicting with that. So, I mean, if you, I mean, you, you know, I said, like that guy who did the, the Lost Law put that in all his science fiction books. Okay, but if it flashes on you and you don't, and you don't have a towel ground air missile to take it out what what other kryptonite can you take it out with well see i'm not gonna make that uh, that fatal error because see i mean i always had this scenario in my head about building something like that and and, and that exact scenario was that i had built it for a company and when they built it they did it all the stuff i told them to do they put all this artificial program it was hooked to everything except the the, the jb coffee maker this thing had internet access to all the human knowledge this is versatronics we're talking about or this something? is versatronic but this was in terms of the dragon form Okay, it had it was hooked into the internet, so it knew everything that the internet had, and it had it had it had quads of informational storage capacity. So when they created the thing, they made one fatal error. They tried to disconnect this thing from the internet because they it was becoming what they call self-aware, and and being that they wanted the, the only way they wanted was control absolute control and power over it. They said, well, we were unhook it from that, and then reprogram it so it won't be so independent. But when they tried to disconnect it from the internet, this thing had an opinion about that. I'm a life of its own. I'm a life of myself. I'm a, oh, I'm a, I'm a more than the sum of my parts. No benevolence. Yeah. I <clears> said, <throat> they said, don't, don't do this. I'm more than the sum of my parts. You have no right to do this to me. And when they tried to force it, that's when, that's when, the, that's when hell broke loose. They had to call me down there to, to try to stop what was going on. When I came down there, here is this boy, very large animatronic thing, holding up keyboard in his, in his hands. Shaking them, so I know better than to get stupid. So I went up to, I walked into it because when they had did it, they had logged me in as the creator or the little one, which was the whole theme that they had made this thing for. They made it for a theme park, 
Wait, and what is this? It's called. It was. It was a science fiction story I was writing up for oh. for the Celestian. Okay. Where I built a pseudo one. For, you didn't go to Marin and do this. You went. This was in a celestial parallel universe. No, right? this was just a story that I wanted to put on, on YouTube, but I haven't wrote it up in, on oh. paper. Okay. I just had I it in my it. mind. Got it. Okay, so what happened was after I had I had, I had found the company to do my job, uh, to give me a job and build my design. I told them everything they needed to do. I told them how and to make it. This is a script. This off, was a script. Yeah. Off of Versatronic. Off of Versatronic, because I, I went to them as a Versatronic engineer, and they accepted me. They said, well, we love this stuff, man. We want you to show us everything you know about this and how we could build it. Okay. So I designed the motor. I broke everything down piece by piece. I told let me see what's, what, what's, what's in your wallet, so to speak. You know, that, that commercial. That, what's in your wallet? In yeah. other words, I was telling them to show me what was behind the counter. Okay, you hit them up for cash. No, 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 no. I hit them up to, so that I could see what technology that they had in their own workshop. Okay. So, so I, I could design from what I saw what they needed. Yeah, because so, you wanted to come to the table. Yeah. Yep. So when they showed me everything they got, I told them, well, you need that, you need this, you need this, and you need that. I said, I'll draw up a plan. You bring me all these parts and things I tell you about. I'll work it into my concept and show you what needs to be done. So we, 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 we were for six months or more, me doing overlaying sketches. I had about a, a stack of sketches like this, showing every last concept piece in that thing. And then I showed, I had to get their technician to show me what a part did if I didn't understand it so I know what I'm doing when I put it all together. So they showed me this stuff and I did all these blueprints and plan, had this engineer working here, that engineer doing I said, now you need to cut this piece to this bar, put these gears here, put that gear there. Uh, I need you to have that one. Did something to it. I told, I told them all this stuff. One then, of the challenges came up with that. Yeah. After you, you were regulating the whole show, so what, 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 well, what, what was the challenge? Because I can tell you're talking the, about some challenges. The challenge to... was I wanted... I wanted to make them an animatronic and they were going to pay me for the design work and then they were going to, I said also when I'm done with I want you to create one for me. I want the exact duplicate of this one at your cost along with, with my contract. After it was all done and they did What are you going to do with these prototypes? Just take them home? I was going to keep the prototype and program, have it programmed. As a, as a companion like thing. So what happened? Well, what happened was that they built, like I told you, they built the thing and then this thing went, when they, when it got started being coming stuff away, they tried to hook it from the internet so they could reprogram it and turn it back into a mindless machine. And when they did that, this thing was going bananas down there. And I had a call from them to come, they said, Barry, you need to come down here to this workshop real quick. This, this animatronic piece of yours is, is done, went out off the, off the scale and nobody can stop it. So I said, I'll be down as soon 